Hello children, welcome, happy to see you again. This is Dakshaini from Bardasnath Metric Higher Secondary School, Arakonam Handling Biology. Children, today we are going to discuss 11th Standard Botany, the first chapter, Living World. And in this chapter, we have discussed about the viruses and various forms of viruses. And the topic of discussion today is in this session is about the bacteria. Yes, is bacteria is friendly or enemetic to us children? Yes. It is both because without bacteria we cannot get some of the uses from it right for example how the curd is prepared without bacteria is it possible no but there are some harmful bacteria also we get diseases also but when compared to bacteria viruses bacteria are less harmful so let us go into the topic so the study of bacteria we call it as bacteriology study of bacteria bacteriology and who is the father of bacteriology robert koch robert koch was the father of bacteriology because he invented the causative organism for anthrax anthrax it's the animal disease cholera and tuberculosis tuberculosis in short we say it as tb right so he was a person who identified before you children think children uh, in the ancient times many people believe that diseases are due to the curse of the god or due to that they will say savine right black man something Be and after the invention of this only they came to know the microbes are responsible for causing some of the diseases so robert koch was called as a father of bacteriology and based on their uses and based on the how they are useful to us they are classified into two types one as a beneficial bacteria and another one as a harmful bacteria beneficial yes we can say it is useful for us in the cooking right especially curd how the curdling is made how the curd is made with, with the help of the bacterium lactobacillus with the amount in, in a certain temperature if you add some of the lactobacillus the entire milk will undergo curdling and become a curd so what is a bacterium children lactobacillus and typhoid harmful when we say it as harmful if it affects us if it causes any disease to us we say it as a harmful example salmonella typhoid from the name itself it's clear it causes typhoid right and the person who discovered microscope was anton van leeuwenhoek right and he found out the microscope and while absorbing the raindrops he found the small cells in it and that is the bacteria but he did not name it as bacteria he called those cells as animal cules underlined children what was the name animal cules so this is about the introduction to the bacteria so now we can study about the characteristic features of bacteria bacteria you know prokaryotic what do you mean by prokaryotic children the organisms with the primitive nucleus pro means primitive and karyo means nucleus so the prokaryotic organisms lack nuclear membrane nucleus does not have any mem uh, membrane and there are no membrane bound organelles also for example we have many cell organelles right in our cell and each cell each cell organelle is bound by a membrane but those membrane bounds are absent in the bacteria and here we cannot say exactly what the genetic material is we it is combined in the center in the form of nucleoid genopore or incipient nucleus right and next here we can say the cell wall what is the cell wall children the cell wall is made up of mostly the bacteria has three layers outermost layer capsule cell wall and then the plasma membrane here the cell wall is made up of polysaccharides and proteins and based on their pigment some are autotrophic and some are heterotrophic what do you mean by autotrophic children if they are able to synthesize their own food it is said to be acto autotrophic if they if they depend on the other organisms it is said to be heterotrophic so some bacteria they do not possess chlorophyll they sense they are said to be heterotrophic they cannot prepare their food on their own example vibrio cholerae which causes cholera in human beings right and some they possess the back pigment bacterio chlorophyll since the chlorophyll is present in the bacteria it is said to be bacterio chlorophyll they can synthesize their own food so it is said to be autotrophic example chromatium and 
they exhibit variation right from generation to generation they show a variation this is an important three mark question children write the characteristic features of bacteria and now we are going to study about the structure of bacteria so based on their structure and their shape the bacteria are classified into two types just look at this children two coccus what is the called coccus the spherical shaped bacteria are said to be coccus right so where this coccus if it is in single it is said to be coccus if two cells are present it is said to be diplococcus and many in clusters staphylococcus if four is present tetracoccus and eight in number sarsina and if it is arranged in the form of a chain it is said to be streptococcus so based on their shape they are classified as coccus right spherical shape next bacillus the rod shaped bacteria comes under the bacillus if it is in a single cell it is said to be bacillus and two diplo bacillus di means two next if it is in the shape of the filament spiral shape spiral lump and comma shape vibrio so what are the shapes spherical rod shape spiral and comma shape right so this is based on their number shape right and now we are going to study about the flagella what is a flagella children you look at this picture flagella helps in the movement right it is the outgrowths of the present outside the bacteria if only one flagellum is present it is said to be monotrichous and if bunch of flagella arises in one side it is said to be lophotrichous and if the bunch of flagellum is present on both the sides it is said to be ampitrichous and if flagellum is present throughout the body of the bacterium on the outer surface it is said to be peritrichous and no flagellum is present it is said to be a trichous a means absent so absence of flagellum a trichous so based on flagellum a trichous monotrichous lophotrichous ampitrichous and peritrichous so now this is the structure of the bacterial cell children you see what is this this is a flagellum right this is a flagellum which helps in the movement and the cell wall the bacterium has three layers first one is a capsule capsule second one cell wall and next one is a plasma membrane or a cell membrane so what are the three important covering children capsule cell wall and plasma membrane and inside the bacterium we see the cytoplasm in which many cell inclusions are present and ribosomes what's the function of ribosomes synthesis of protein and then plasmid and bacteria has two gen genetic material right one is a bacterial chromosome and another one is a plasmid so let us discuss each and every structure in detail now so children first in the structure of bacteria what is the outermost layer it is a capsule capsule is the outermost layer it is thick and it is made up of a substance called glycocalyx glycocalyx and what is the first layer plasma above that cell wall and attached to the cell wall is a capsule and capsule is very sticky in nature so that it can easily stick on to our uh, intestines right or your teeth right it can uh, and the tissues so its sticky nature helps in attachment and this capsule helps the organism to prevent themselves from desiccation what i mean by desiccation children destruction the bacterial cannot be destroyed due to the presence of this capsule so outermost thick and sticky in nature it is a what capsule and inner to the capsule what is present cell wall what is present cell wall cell wall is made of granules so it is said to be granular and rigid rigid means support the body the support of the bacterial cell is due to the presence of this cell wall and this cell wall this orange layer is a cell wall this is the cell wall and cell wall has porin porin means the proteins right which are uh, which can allow some molecules to pass into the bacterial cell porin is made of pores right and 
important to neat question children from this write the composition of the cell wall right just underline in your book what is the composition it is made up of peptidoglycan or mucopeptide and what is the which mucopeptide n acetyl glucose amine and n acetyl muramic acid and peptide chain of 4 or 5 amino acids like this 4 or 5 amino acids to form the peptide chain that is a protein chain right and here porin is present so the support and the shape of the cell is retained by the cell wall cell wall composition peptidoglycan mucopeptide n acetyl muramic acid and 4 to 5 amino acids right and next structure what is the next structure children plasma membrane so now let us see about the plasma membrane So, next layer inner to the capsule cell wall and then the plasma membrane and plasma membrane is made up of a substance called lipoprotein. It is a mixture of lipids and protein. So, it is said to be lipoproteins and here the plasma membrane what is it controls the entry and exit. What do you mean by ex entry children? Some molecules enter into the bacterial cell and some move out of the bacterial cell it is controlled by this plasma membrane and here the enzymes produced by this plasma membrane is responsible for oxidation of metabolism and photosystems all the enzymes necessary for the functions are present in the plasma membrane so far we have discussed about the layers right what are the layers capsule cell wall and plasma membrane and now we are going to discuss about the cytoplasm cytoplasm is very thick and semi transparent what do you mean by semi transparent children it is blurry right not clear and it contains ribosomes which is responsible for the formation of protein ribosomes function is synthesis of protein right and what are all the inclusions present in the cytoplasm throughout the cytoplasm some things are present what are they glycogen it's a polysaccharide and polybihydroxybutyrate granules sulfur granules and gas vesicles it's an important question children underline it what are all the things present in the cytoplasm right so we have discussed about the cytoplasm And now I told you it consists of two types genetic material one is a bacterial chromosome and another one is a plasmid right bacterial chromosome you just look at here children this is the bacterial chromosome right which is a nucleoid which is present in the center and it is not bounded by a membrane and uh, in eukaryotic cell we can say histone proteins are present but here histone proteins are absent and membrane bound organelles are absent it is confined into the center as the structure called nucleoid right so nucleoid no histone proteins are found right and it is attached and at one point attached to the plasma membrane just look at this picture one end of the nucleoid is attached to the plasma membrane this green layer and next about the plasmid this is a plasmid children right it is circular is circular double stranded mostly the structure will be like this double stranded circular and self replication during that the time of replication this strand separate into two right so self replicating autonomous elements right and here and size of the plasmid just underline children what is the size 1 to 500 kilobytes right and nearly total percentage of the dna about 5 percentage is contributed by this plasmid what is the percentage 0.5 to 5 percentage and they have the genes responsible for fertility everything so based on the genes present they are we can say they can classify them as a factor for fertility or factor for resistance right coal factor for colicine RA, RA means root inducing and last one TI is a tumor inducing. So, based on their functions, we can classify the bacteria. It is a tumor question children as 
F factor R factor Ri, Ti and Coal factor right and we are going to discuss about the mesosomes. What is a mesosome children? We can see the small structures attached like this as said to be the mesosomes right mesosomes what it produces later it get modified into vesicles and tubules and it is responsible for respiration and binary fission right bacteria respire through this mesosome and binary fission right it splits into two that is a reproduction which takes place in bacteria that is also due to this mesosomes but it lies attached to the plasma membrane and polysomes or poly ribosomes and ribosomes are present here these structures ribosomes actually the structure of the ribosomes will be like this right it is the main function of this is the protein synthesis and more ribosomes together we can say it as a poly ribosomes it consists of two subunit and we say this as a 70s type what we say 70 yes type larger unit is of 30 s and smaller unit is of 30 s and the larger unit is of 50 yes so 50 plus 30 80 right but on combining while forming the structure of a ribosomes it becomes 70 s type so what type it belongs to 70 s type and they are held together by the mrna and number of ribosomes may vary from 10000 to 50,000 right and last we are going to study about the attachments that is uh, what are the two attachments we can see here children one is the flagellum and another one is the pili or fimbriae right these two these green color outgrowths here right so two structures we are going to study and we know flagellum it is 20 to 30 micrometer in diameter and 15 micrometer in length right and here in the eukaryotic cell a single uh, what single myofibre single flagellum may be made up of 9 plus 2 11 microtubules but here it is made up of single myofibril right flagellum helps in the movement and based on their number of flagellum the bacteria can be classified into different tribes such as ampitrichus lopotrichus peritrichus right next one fimbriae or pili fimbriae or pili they are present on the outer surface of the bacterium and they arise from the which layer cell wall right cell wall and it is 0.2 to 2 micrometer long and the diameter is 0.025 micrometer and apart from this pili it is present throughout the body sex pili also is present which helps in forming the conjugation tube so far we have discussed about the structure of bacteria children so what are all the things we discussed about the capsule cell wall plasma membrane cytoplasm mesosomes bacterial chromosome plasmid finally flagellum and pili right so with this topic this session comes to an end children in this uh, session what we have discussed we have discussed about the structure of bacteria it's an important question children draw and label the bacterial cell it's a very important question practice a diagram go through it and with this we have attached the study material and assessment for this topic go through it and make sure how far you understood the topic thank you children have a nice day